So things are getting increasingly almost scary on the Korean Peninsula. In December, there was a long-range missile launch. In February, an underground nuclear test. Very recently, the hotline between the North and the South was cut because, in the words of the North's leadership, war could break out at any moment. And then in the past days, the United States flew B-2 stealth bombers capable of delivering nuclear weapons and flew them more than 6,500 miles from their base in America through South Korea and was clearly a show of military capacity and solidarity with the South and its ongoing tensions with the North. It seems to me there are two fundamental questions that a faith-based perspective can be brought as this kind of stuff begins to unfold. One of them is, what's the relationship between pursuing peace and pacifism? Is it inherently bad the United States upped the ante by deploying those B-2s and having them drop dummy bombs as part of military exercises? Does that mean that we are somehow less committed to peace? I don't think it does. I think it's possible for people to really maintain a steadfast commitment to peace while accepting that there are circumstances under which force may actually be necessary. While I know not all will agree with that, and certainly not all faith traditions will agree with that, at the very least it merits consideration, or we will end up with the same kind of polarization where peace means pacifism and everything else is simply warmongering. And that leads to the second issue, which is always what a faith-based perspective can do, both on the peace-pacifism issue and also on what's going on in Korea as a whole. Whatever faith we follow, they're all designed to help us see new possibilities emerge where others haven't. And especially as we follow Passover and Easter, both of which are about the fact the status quo, as it seems, is not all there is in the world. Whatever one thinks about the use of the B2s in these exercises, all of us should be turning to whatever faith we follow or whatever no faith we follow and ask, how can we see this conflict a little bit differently? What new angles could be taken so that actually the greatest peace and security is achieved for all of us without resorting to the violence that certainly horrifies the best of us?